Congress is floating the idea of banning TikTok on all government devices amid growing national security concerns around the Chinese-owned social media platform. The New York Times Magazine's Alex Palmer writes how the app's meteoric popularity and impact on American culture has been further exacerbating diplomatic strains between the U.S. and China. And joining me now is contributing writer for the New York Times Magazine, Alex Palmer. Alex, let's start with the basic national security question. What risk do officials say TikTok poses to national security? Well, there's two primary concerns. The first is that the data gathered on American users could be used for the purpose of harassment, blackmail, espionage. The second is that the app could be weaponized at some point in the future, that you have this incredibly powerful algorithm. What if you, you tailored it uh, to show divisive content to Americans, uh, to get them out in the streets fighting against each other? Uh, what if you could sway an election with this algorithm? So to some extent, uh, the first fear about uh, data gathered on the app has already been vindicated. Even today, you've seen Forbes confirming that some of their journalists were tracked uh, by ByteDance, by TikTok, uh, using the app because ByteDance wanted to see who they were talking to, who their sources were. That second fear about uh, weaponization of the algorithm that is in some ways more insidious uh, and more dangerous because it's hard to disprove that. That's a theoretical fear. What if at some point in the future the app was weaponized? And I think that's what you're seeing driving a lot of concern of the TikTok. So it feels like the, the several states have moved to ban the app from government devices. And so the question is, that seems to be aimed at that first concern you had. Um, but is it, uh, it doesn't seem like it's going to get to the millions of users who are, don't have devices that are, that are connected to the federal government or to any particular state. Yeah, that's, these bans, I think, are, are sending a message more than really creating an impact. Uh, TikTok has approximately 100 million American users at this point. I doubt many of them are federal or state employees who only access the device, the, the app on their state device. So that's not really making a dent in, in who's actually seeing it. It's more, I think, sending a message to the federal government as negotiations are underway with TikTok and with ByteDance saying, look, we take this seriously. Uh, we want some real action on this because these negotiations have been going on for more than a year now. And it seems like this national security review is just uh, not going to lead where perhaps some states want it to. Do you think that basically the next step is for uh, legislation or some kind of effort to get rid of TikTok altogether to get at that other bigger piece, that um, capturing of uh, U.S. user data or um, creating an inroads to possibly influence uh, um, Americans in you know some kind of nefarious scheme? I think that's sort of the logical conclusion, but I would still be surprised if we actually got to that. Uh, as you know, Trump tried to ban the app several years ago. That ended up in sort of a, a legal fracas, and that was quietly dropped. And I think, you know, there's legal issues to that, and it's also just what administration would want to ban something that 100 million Americans enjoy and view possibly every day. Uh, it's a real uh, political fireball to, to go after it in that way. So what you see is the Biden administration negotiating with ByteDance so that uh, there would be certain national security checks, uh, ways to make sure the algorithm is not being abused, that the data is being stored in the U.S. so it can't be accessed by China. Uh, it really comes down to, in the end, do you think you can trust that deal? Uh, and so far, it looks like the Biden administration is trying to reach a point where there could be a trustworthy deal because they don't want to ban it outright. It's just uh, that's a bad precedent, and it, it, it uh, creates some accusations of xenophobia, which is a fair concern. And... Um... Alex, on this, isn't the U.S. government also using TikTok? I mean, to send messages about vaccines and about the war in Ukraine. So um, is the government kind of trying to have it both ways? Or I guess let's put it another way. The government does seem see some utility in having a channel of information that it can access as well. Absolutely. And I think that's what's so interesting about the story of TikTok. It's such a it is an absolutely unique product in the sense that no Chinese company, no Chinese app has ever captured the American market and certainly not American attention spans like TikTok has. So you see the federal government with this very sort of uh, disjointed dichotomous policy that on the one hand, they know they need it. Uh, they need to reach, especially young voters, to put out accurate uh, information. But they also know that it poses a potential risk uh, to American data, to American elections, uh, to American attention spans. So I, I think that's what makes it so interesting and makes it such a difficult case. You've never had a Chinese company reach this level of influence. So it's needed, but it's also feared. Yeah. 
Absolutely. Alex Palmer, thank you so much for being with us.